Hello, good day to everyone. Welcome to the another episode on mold flow tips and workflow. This episode is in continuation to the earlier episode on reviewing the top 12 results as part of your mold flow report or a guidance for the result interpretation. Let me throw a bit of light on to the last episode and what we reviewed. In last episode, we've reviewed on to the fill time. We reviewed on to the injection pressure. We reviewed on to the clamp force and of course the bulk temperature. These were the four results that we reviewed in the last episode. In this episode, particularly I want to review a shear rate, shear stress and volumetric shrinkage. Let's get started on it. I'm reviewing the same components uh, that I used it for the earlier episode. Let's begin with the bulk shear rate. Now what this result is all about. As the polymers flows through the cavity and injection time as you know it's a, a, a small portion of the overall cycle time. And shear rate is caused because of the polymer, you know, the layers slide on each other. The layer of the polymer which is in contact with the mold freezes the first and the and still the layer in the in the center still continues to be an and a liquid form or you know semi liquid form and then they causes a, a brushing on each other or we call it as a sliding on each other if this sliding is too fast it causes the polymer chain to break and that causes the degradation of the polymer and it also impacts the mechanical properties of the polymer so what does it mean that probably it may cause the premature failure of the component as well so how do we review and interpret these results the shear rate or the bulk shear rate particularly it shows at the end of the fill time should not exceed the recommended value by the resin manufacturer like the in this case we are reviewing this material and when we go into the recommended processing we would able to see the maximum shear rate in this case it's around like you know 100000 per second uh, it's always been a a unit with respect to the time so we should see that it should not exceed that the recommended unit for in this case the recommended limit limit is around 100000 and i am getting it around like 74000 per second and the shear rate the maximum shear rate bulk occurs at the smallest section in the part where we could see the highest flow of the polymer but natural it is at the gate location so how do i review it well there is a one way with the help of the shaded plot i can zoom in and i can query it or examine it and i should be able to see the value at that and as i mentioned it's a time dependent so we need to review it with respect to the time probably i can animate it through the time or the other way to look at it as adding an extra plot or the, when i go into a new plot i can add it as a shear rate bulk and look at it as a xy plot i already created for it and let's see how the gate locations or the results at the gate locations look like i have taken uh, the point very close to the part let me off the cavity layers so that we could able to see it clearly and uh, this is what i have taken it at the at the end of the gate 
but probably you should have taken at the just at the smallest section of the gate and have a look at that how the shear rate is the limiting value should not or the maximum shear rate in your part should not exceed the limiting value given by the resin manufacturer now the other results that we are going to review today is on to the maximum shear stress this on the on your cavities and maximum shear stress now and the definition maximum shear stress is caused because of the you know because of the layer of the solid and the fluid layer you know uh, the forces get induced because of the shearing twice closely related to the shear rate but this is the forces that get induced and the forces that get induced is been referred as per unit area and it is highly influenced by the pressure so the packing pressure has a lot of impact on to the shear stress in your part as a rule of thumb you know the shear stress in your part should not exceeds the 1% of your linear mechanical property or or tensile strength of the material say today i am reviewing the material which is an polypropylene and usually the polypropylene has the you know the shear or the mechanical tensile strength in the range of like 25 MPa to 30 MPa and it's you can see that it's roughly 1% of that value but it is always better to get you know reviewed with your resin manufacturer so let's get uh, started and review the shear stress results shear stress result at wall and as you can see that it's again time dependent and make sure that you use the scaling to review that where this in this case i am going to put it as per frame and i am going to uh, sorry you can go go and look at it per frame as well like each of every step as a time progresses you can able to see where the maximum stress is happening but i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this as 0.2 to the maximum I, I know that my limiting value is 0.25 but I will go little bit lesser than the limiting value and see which areas are having and I'll put that as a transparent and I'll also put the features up so that I would be able to see these results clearly. Now at the end of the cycle that is 15 seconds I don't have any shear stress in the part that's good. But I want to see that where the maximum shear stress is happening. Usually it happens or it probably found into the thin sections in the part. And most probably it happens uh, at the beginning of the packing or just like you started start up the packing or the middle of the packing. That's where you would be able to see it. Now uh, it sometimes, uh, you know, when it becomes difficult to review it as I can see that there is find it very difficult to see what I'm going to do is I'm further going to drop my limiting value from 0.2 to 0.15 so that at least I would able to know that which areas are having a shear stress about the limiting value of 1.5 and uh, I'm up to like 7 seconds, 9 seconds Still, I'm not able to see it. Okay. I'm starting from zero now. Yes, of course, at the gate location area, you'll be able to see now as the flow is happening. But we want to see at the you know rib area probably that could be the potential regions where we will have a shear stress above the limiting value. And you can see that at just at the beginning of the packing or end of the filling, 
I could able to see that the shear stress again these are not been exceeding okay these are exceeding above the 1.15 you know uh, MPA uh, the limiting value for us is 20.25 so look out the areas where the limiting value is more than 25 if not then try to scale it down at least you will be able to know that which areas are having the shear stress close to the limiting value okay i hope these results will help you to understand the shear stress at wall now the last results probably i want to review is the volumetric shrinkage okay volumetric shrinkage in the part should not be anywhere misled or confused with the linear shrinkage volumetric shrinkage in definition is the change in the volume at that particular location with respect to the original volume say if the original volume is 1 cc how much the volume in that area has been reduced after the fill pack results that's what we call as a volumetric shrinkage now what relation does it has with the with the linear shrinkage usually as a thumb of rule you know um, it should not exceed the 3x of the linear shrinkage value like say i'm now reviewing a polypropylene material and for the polypropylene if i say that i am having a, a shrinkage of linear shrinkage of 1.5 the volumetric shrinkage in my part should not be more than 4.5 percent now this is again a guideline it's not like a very uh, straightforward rule i can use the volumetric shrinkage to find out which are the potential areas for the sing marks as well sometimes you know sing marks results may not show the very appropriate thing particularly it needs a mesh matching the volumetric shrinkage can be a good guidance over here so volumetric shrinkage Results can be used to locate the areas of the potential sink marks as well. Again, the volumetric shrinkage results should be reviewed. You know uh, how the differentiation uh, of the volumetric shrinkage is happening across the part. If the difference in the volumetric shrinkage in the part is too high, let's say suppose from two percent all the way to the eleven percent. Uh, in majority of the part then probably the it is having a chances that it may warp and how do I use the volumetric shrinkage results to optimize my packing is to look at that if the change in the packing is causing you know uh, a 2 is to 1 ratio so suppose my earlier volumetric shrinkage results were showing a maximum value of 6% by optimizing a packing or changing in the packing the 6.5 or the 6% is all the way going down to like a 3 uh, then probably something I need to optimize onto the packing then in that area okay so packing is influencing a lot let's look at scaling these results I'm going to scale it say suppose this is a polypropylene material at the end of the cycle time I'm going to look at the areas which are potentially for high so my minimum value would be like acceptable for this is 4.5 percent because i'm getting i'm i'm reviewing a polypropylene material and i'm going to have a linear shrinkage of 1.5 percent uh, uh 3x of 1.5 percent it gets me to the like 4.5 and i'm going to review the areas which are having a you know volumetric shrinkage or higher than the requirement value so probably these are the areas that probably i have to look at and uh, yeah, this is the areas that and could be that these areas may have even a sing marks actually these areas are having a potential of sing marks as well though the sing mark may not be showing out but I can clearly see that these areas may have a sing marks as well okay so probably optimizing the packing uh, can help you to reduce the volumetric shrinkage as well so I hope uh, today's episode on the three results that we reviewed is a shear stress, uh, shear stress at wall, and uh, sorry, shear stress, maximum shear stress or shear stress at wall, and then bulk shear rate 
and volumetric shrinkage will help an add-on to your report uh, for the resulting computations. Thank you for your time and I talk to you again into the next episode. Have a great day.